you've been reading, you said 23 years? Roughly, yeah. yeah. Um, do you feel your performance has changed o- over time? Do you do or do you read any differently than you used to? Um, I'm more confident than I used to be. Uh, it used to be that it was kind of exciting because I, I never knew how it was going to get, go, you know, like in, in, and until my name was called and then I would sort of stumble up to the, to the stage. Uh, or I liked having being a feature reader every once in a while so that I could really control the whole thing, you know, and think about what I wanted to do and why and what the intro would be. And I usually, I like I liked being really prepared. But, but, but in the past year or so, I, 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 found, I find that, uh, that I really don't need any of that. I can just, I just get up and just start reading. And sometimes I'll pick a poem um, um, uh, at the last second, you know. Uh, I, I, got up, I was at a conference one time and this MC who had heard me read before. And he said, well, this next person, uh, uh, I hope he doesn't read these, 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 any of his sad poems because they really uh, uh, bum me out. You know? <laughs> I, 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 this is some intro, you know. So, I, so I'm on my way up to the stage while he's saying this. And, and I thought, oh, Christ, I was going to read all kind of sad poems. <laughs> so, 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 I was, so, I, so I switched. Fortunately, I had plan B there in my hand. And I switched them and I read three you know, clever, humorous ones. And, and, and it really worked well. And then and I thought, well, you know something about just being ready to read, you know, and, and just rolling with it, that, 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 that I find to be really fun. And, and I really, this maybe sounds awful, but I, I really enjoy the sound of my own voice, you know, mm. uh, when I'm up there, you know, I, I feel especially... Fortunately, a lot of other people enjoy the sound of your voice, <laughs> too. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the process of, uh, of memorizing and reciting poems, I think, has really deepened my performing voice. Uh, it's deepened my, especially when I do these poems, the ones that I've memorized, um, uh, I feel much stronger, and I, I sense the audience is, 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 is there with me much more. There's not a page between us, it's just me and them, you know. And I'm getting to the point now where with some poems, I can actually look people in the eye. I used to have to like look over their heads, you know, as if I was talking to some spiritual being. Or Picture something. them in your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought of that, but that's a good yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, I, from the first times I can remember hearing you, I thought, you know, this guy reads very well, and there are some poets that read, yeah. just seem to have a good reading. Dave Kaczynski comes to yeah. mind. Mm-hmm. It's a very yeah. strong uh, reader. Um, so that was something that you think was always w- with you. You didn't sort of have to learn. No. To... Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, was, I was a teacher for about uh, 12 years before I read a poem in public, you know, so I, I'm, I was used to being in public, you know, it was like that, that, and so it wasn't, I didn't have stage fright, uh, particularly, and so, so it was kind of a natural transition that way, uh, but I didn't, uh, my sister's an actress, and so she really has that, oh. that, that, uh, that uh, art form down, and, and she's always encouraging me to do it, but I haven't ever been able to free up the time, or I think I'm a little scared to do it, actually, but, mm. uh, but, uh, uh, that's it. Reading my own stuff is one thing. Getting on the stage and memorizing somebody else's stuff, I don't know. I probably could do it, but I, I just don't want to try. Mike and I had been in a critique group years ago run by Christine Grow, and one of the things she used to do at her critique was have someone else read your poem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I never hardly volunteered to read anybody else's poem for that, that exact... I was mm-hmm. scared mm-hmm. to do it. Reading my poem, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. Reading someone else's poem is entirely yeah. another. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mike, you had some something. Well, speaking of critique that. groups, I, I know you've had a lot of experience with critique groups over the years, and uh, you know, you say you do a lot of revising on the poems that you memorize. But uh, what do you feel that you get out of the critique groups as far as your re- revisions of your work? Um. I get a lot of opinions, mm-hmm. uh, and and I write them all down as as, they're, as as people are talking, and then hopefully the next day if I get the time I bring the the poem up on the computer and then I go through it line by line and I, I try to start typing people's re- responses and and, mm-hmm. and when and when that happens I often get ideas for how I really want to change the the, the poem. Sometimes I'll really disagree with the statement, you know. Mm-hmm. But as I'm writing, I'm thinking, well, underneath that, st- 
statement, there's a there's a, there's kind of like a deeper issue, you know. Somebody said, "Well, you ought to cut the last two lines," you know, um, and uh, uh, and and my response is, "No," you know, I'm to say it, but that's the inside, uh, and uh, and uh, but then when I'm when I'm thinking of a particular poem, and so then when I when I'm sort of uh, writing out the responses to it, I'm thinking, well, you know, that person had a point. If if the if, if the poem ended there, it would be a perfectly acceptable poem. It it, it would be shorter, uh, but it's not the poem I want to write, you know. And I, and that was really what got in touch with me. There's 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 this poem is a poem that I want to write, you know. And if people said I had a critique group leader said you're not supposed to want things. You're supposed to poem wants. You don't want. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, but I thought, well, no, I want to. I want to. I want I want to say something, you know, and and so if if, if that response comes back, I I, I don't um, uh, cut the the poem, uh, and I remember uh, I I, I uh, showed a poem to Lisa Barron once, and and uh, and uh, um, and the the poem ends with sort of like a plea to the muse, you know, uh, oh please, you know, come to me and inspire me or something like that. It was said better than that, but, and Lisa read that ending and she said, you know, she said, you really ought to end the, end the poem with please, and then just stop, huh. you know, and I thought, wow, you know, and that, that was one snippet, you know, and it just yeah. made the whole poem. Uh, yeah. uh, well, that's that. a very explicit suggestion. Yeah. You don't always get that. Sometimes you get right. like a reaction and sometimes you get a reaction that you don't expect. Yeah. And do you feel like you get like disappointed that people don't take your poem sure. to mean what you want the poem to mean? Or do you Oh want... yeah. Oh yeah. I have one that, that, that I thought I think is one of the best things I've ever written and I've never found a critique group that's liked it. I ran it with four different critique groups. You, know, and they you have to say, keep searching. They're all, they're, 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 I figure, well, you know, and it's like, well, you know, maybe it isn't that good. <laughs> Do you have it with you? No, I don't. No, uh, no I don't. It's, mortal stakes. it's called Mortal Stakes. We, we'd be willing to tell you that we like it. <laughs> have you ever found uh, at a critique group that half the, half the people have one suggestion and the other <laughs> half have taken the complete opposite view yeah. and leaving you in utter confusion? No, I, that doesn't usually happen to me. What I like to do is I like to hear them argue. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, and, 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 and they, they, they're off, they often have very well taken positions, you know, and so I sort of, I sort of really encourage people to you know, speak up and say, say some more about what you, what, what you said, I'm curious, and you say some more, you know, and, and, and let's see you and him fight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's between them, you don't feel conflicted about them. Not usually, no. no, no that's no, good. No, it could be like going to a doctor for a second opinion, then you get one of each, and you yeah. know what to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or you get you get the two doctors agreeing, and then you say, well, "What's the point of the second opinion?" Here? 